Hey there, Jeremy here from friendofrc.com. The topic of today's episode is selling your used RC. It's certainly not the first video or resource really online uh, with tips and advice for selling things or even specifically RC. But it is one of, I'm pretty sure, the only videos out there where you're going to get advice from someone who does this for a living. And by this I don't mean selling RCs, but I do marketing and sales, that's my day job, that's what aff affords me all these RCs, and specifically online sales. So there's a couple of general tips in, in, uh, in reference to selling really anything, and I'm going to start with those. First of all, you've got to take the emotion out of it. If you love your RC, you're never going to be satisfied with any amount you get ever. It's going to cloud your judgment when you've got a, a deal facing you. It's going to just make the whole experience not fun. And maybe you're selling RC for not a fun reason. Maybe you're not upgrading. Maybe you're selling it because you're short on cash. And that's OK, too, but you've got to take the emotion out of the situation. Uh, the second real important step is doing your research. You need to go around on the web, take a pen and paper, write down some information. What are people getting for this model? If you're selling a two-wheel drive Rustler VXL, you need to go out to eBay and not just look at what people are asking for. That's OK. It's more important to look at maybe the last 5 or 10 or 20 that's sold. Take the average price of those, and that's kind of what to expect going into it. Uh, you need to compare as close as possible, and uh, there's certain things you need to take out of the equation. For, for the most part, um, you know, one good piece of advice of the many, for example, that, that Squirrel gives is, to sell your expensive hop up parts separately, and I don't disagree with that at all. Um, it is more of a pain in the butt when you've got to ship all these separate pieces, but really, for the most part, you're going to price yourself out. You know, there's a heck of a lot more people looking for a Rustler two wheel drive than a Rustler two wheel drive with a Mamba system in it, um, or a Tekken system, or expensive, you know, servos and all, and all this. If you want to sell it with that stuff, that's cool. It'll probably increase the likelihood that your, your kit will sell, but it won't necessarily increase the overall value. People who are looking to buy things are looking for a deal. The very nature of eBay puts people in the mindset, I'm looking for a great deal. So you know, as a seller, you've got to keep that in mind. Same thing with Craigslist, and really same thing if you're posting things up at your local track. Uh, I, I find most people get, they get the most money when they sell at the track or to somebody they know. Um, because you get to transfer a little of that uh, emotional attachment and value. But for the most part, it is what it is. It's plastic and metal, and it's got a value. Another place to research is forums. A lot of forums have marketplaces where people buy and sell things. It's a good way to get to other RC people and uh, to avoid the fees that eBay applies. Um, you also need, as part of the research phase, you need to take into account shipping and handling. And not just the shipping and handling price, but the price of all of the materials you're going to need. You could ship it, you could buy one of those nice uh, flat rate boxes, that's what I use, but the price of the bubble wrap and newspaper, well, newspapers should be free, but all that kind of stuff, make sure you've got it around because a big part of it is when you, know, when you sell an item, it's just right to make sure you ship it out in good shape. You pack it really nice. You don't want the thing arriving broken. That's Nobody wins there. Now you've got an angry customer or, you know, somebody who's mad at you, maybe they're sending it back, and now you've just got a total mess. When listing your car, you need to be as descriptive as possible. And be honest. If something's broken, tell people. You might be surprised. A lot of times people might not care. They might have spare parts laying around. You know, it just, it just might not matter to people. It's just better to be upfront and honest about these things. Um, you want to take the time to clean it. Uh, it you want to make it look as nice and new as possible. Maybe that's not always possible. <laughs> Maybe it's just just hammered and there's not a hell, heck of a lot less uh, for you to do, but spend a half an hour cleaning it. That's going to add another 10, 20 bucks to it. And if nothing else, it's going to make sure that your RC sells quicker because it's going to look better than all the other RCs that they didn't take that time to do it. Um, if you want to put your old stock stuff on it, that's cool too. A lot of times when people sell kits, maybe they've got tires or certain hop of parts that they're only going to use on that rig when they just include them, that's nice too. But take your time, clean it up, make, make sure it looks nice. If you're including other parts, 
clean them up too. If you want people to have value in what you're giving them, then you've got to have value too. So if you're including a $30 set of tires and rims, make it look like a $30 tire, uh, tire and rim set. Don't just clean up your rig and then kind of throw these junky, muddy tires on there. It's not going to work. Uh, you need to just make sure everything's good. If you have all the paperwork, uh, make sure that you've got all the original paperwork. If you don't, it's not a big deal. Um, it generally increases the value if you have original packaging type things, but I, I find with RC, it's really not that big of a deal. Um, if your RC is a little more expensive, if you have like a nice eighth scale rig or something that's a couple hundred bucks, you may want to consider even spending the 20 bucks for a new Lexan and uh, painting that up. A lot of times people will pay a premium for a nice looking lid, uh, but even a nice solid paint, paint color with uh, putting your, you know, some stickers on there, that's going to add value too. It's just going to, you know, just go around, look on eBay and look at the busted up Lexans on there. And if you're looking for $150, $200 or more, you might want to take the time to put a new lid on there. Just put a nice, easy, even coat of paint. Um, the next step really is take lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of pictures. Take it from the people who know what they're doing when it comes to selling cars, like AutoTrader, Cars.com. Go look at their website. You know, it, there's not a used car out there with less than 30 pictures, typically. And that is because statistically, the more pictures that people find, or the more pictures that they post, the higher value they get, and the more often they sell their car, and quicker too, which is important if you're looking for cash. So don't just take one, don't just take two, take like 50, and then pick your best 20, and try to include those somewhere. When you take your pictures, make sure you apply the quality all the way through. Make sure you have the right lighting, Make sure you take it in a nice spot where the rig's going to look good. Because this is all that people have is a you know, two-dimensional picture of your truck. They don't know about you know, different how it looks or things that are cool about it unless they can see it. Being as descriptive as possible is one of the most effective selling tools that you've got available to you. You need to take the time and make sure your description is accurate, just lengthy enough to be useful, and free of spelling errors or grammatical errors layout, you know, bullet points, things like that, things that add value, those are all things that can increase the likelihood that, that somebody reading your listing on eBay or Craigslist, that they're going to be more interested in your rig, more likely to buy it. You may want to also consider video. Obviously, that's easy for me to say. We have a bunch of cameras, and, and it's relatively easy for me to take, a, take a, a video of something quick and upload it. That said, just like with pictures, only do it if you can make it look nice. I'm not saying it's got to be in 1080p, but what I'm saying is it does have to be well lit and not shot on a camera phone looking all shaky and, and, and things like that. Um, you know, it, it can help you significantly, but it can hurt you if it's not done well. So to summarize, you need to do your research and set your expectations. Going into it with the right mindset, the right pricing, and uh, the proper information it's going to make the process a lot smoother for you. Maybe you see, hey, these trucks, they're selling for next to nothing, and, I just, and you just decide to keep it. And that's okay, too. At least you saved a few bucks to list it on eBay or all the hassle of taking pictures, things like that. You need to take the emotion out of it. The research should replace emotion. Be as descriptive and thorough as possible in your listings. So you know, tell them all the things about it. Take the time to write it up. Make sure there's no spelling, grammar errors, anything like that. Take lots of pictures. We talked about maybe video too. Just make your truck look the best. If you're selling a slash two wheel drive and there's a freaking thousand of them on eBay, if you don't do these things, the only thing you have to compete on is price. And that's why I'm so, I'm trying to be so specific about things that you can do. You've got to look at it from the other side. You know, if all they have is one picture, that's all they have to go off of. The next thing they look at is price. If they're comparing five different ones, but yours looks better, you, they trust you more, they're going to pay more for it. Not only that, you're going to have more people interested. So if you've got an auction type thing, you're going to drive your price up. And you're also increasing the likelihood that your item will even sell in the first place. There's nothing more annoying than waiting 10 days for an eBay auction to end and then have it not sell. Make sure before you ship it out, test it all. 
confirm that it's working because you better believe the person that opens the box next is going to be doing the same thing. So if you have anything weird with it, maybe it's brand new, it just popped up, you got to get a handle before you ship it because otherwise it's coming right back. It's being nothing but a headache. So I hope these, uh, these tips help you uh, when you're looking to maybe sell your RC, get the most cash for it, or possibly upgrade to something else. And uh, if you have any other questions, post them up below. And uh, if this video is helpful to you, please you know, make sure you share with other people. And um, you know, if you're not subscribed already, do that so you can stay in the loop when we upload new tutorial videos. Hope you have a great day.